How's it going, everybody? Now, some groups that I interact with uh, here on YouTube in real life are the preppers, the survivalists, the homesteaders, the historical reenactors, and people bringing back old crafts. Now, what all these people have in common is they're bringing back kind of lost skills, things we've forgotten how to do as a society uh, that are important if you want to survive, you want to uh, build a traditional homestead, you want to preserve food or do whatever, you know, hew logs or hew beams from logs, all the old crafts that we just go to Home Depot, you know, get lumber or whatever, or we go to Walmart and buy all the food we want. And I think that's extremely interesting. I follow groups who are bringing back historical archery, historical uh, building and shooting, historical firearms, and uh, been experimenting a lot with historical woodworking, everything from making hewing beams or ribbing planks and all that, and it's extremely interesting. And I've been talking to a lot of these group uh, people from these groups, and I think I've found something that I can teach you that these people do not know. Generally, 95% of the population does not know this because it's something that we just have available to us. Um, and what that is is measurement. Uh, people do not know how to make the tools that allow us to measure things, allow us to make th sure things are level, both vertical and horizontal, and allow us to make 90 degree angles. And it seems like a lot of these people have to have these tools on hand in order to build any of these things. Now what we notice from all these eras that people reenact uh, everything from buckskinners who do early fur trades to medieval reenactors is that they put together a a kit of everything they have that they need. Buckskinners go very uh, kind of minimalist. They just have their axes usually, a few maybe tools or whatever. But all these people from all these eras built things. They built uh, fortifications, massive armies in the Middle Ages built uh, fortifications and castles in France. The Romans built massive walls and fortification while in uh, uh, Germany fighting the barbarians. They all were able to build things. People on the uh, uh, Buckskinners were building cabins. Lewis and Clark built forts while they're out there. And what you don't see in these reenactments usually or people who are doing this is people carrying around squares or plumb bobs or a guy with, you know, a buckskinner with a uh, ruler sticking out of his uh, possibles bag. You usually don't see this. And people do not know how to make these things uh, just, you know, on your own without any, you know, carrying any of this crap around. And historically, you don't really see this come up a lot. And I would put to you that it's because they probably didn't. Um, the Romans probably did not carry around massive amounts of squares or rulers or not. And I'm going to show you how to make all this from one absolutely important item and two concepts. That's all you need. So what are we going to need? We're going to need something to allow us to make straight lines. We're going to need something that will allow us to measure things very accurately. We're going to need to be able to true things, mean make them a, a level both a vertical and horizontal, and we're going to be able to make 90 degree angles. So we can do all of that with a bit of string and two concepts. Those concepts are we need an object, any object that maintains constant dimensions, and we need four numbers. Well, three numbers if you can add without taking your shoes off. We need three, four, and five. We need to have those numbers written down or in our head somewhere, but that's all you need. So we're a fur trapper in the middle of America and we're realizing winter's coming on. We probably need a cabin. Or we are some peasant standing in medieval Europe and we just got told by our Lord that we must build a fortification and it must be exactly to his standards, otherwise we're getting our head whacked off. So, we got our bit of string. How do we do all this and how do we do it accurately, make it look good and not fall down? Well, what's so special about a piece of string? Look at it, nothing special about it. It can be made out of basically anything, piece of leather, uh, rip up your shirt if you need to. But what's so special about it? Well, it does something we don't see very often in nature and it's this. Make a straight line. Now straight lines are important. I can stretch a piece of string out and make a straight wall. So long as I build that wall along this piece of string, 
uh, it will be straight. I can very easily lay out a building with that. Uh, but it does one other thing. It allows us to make straight edges, which is very important while measuring things. So if I take this, cover it in chalk, and snap it, I can make a straight edge on a board and cut that board and it will be straight. Now the modern equivalent of that is of course a chalk line, which we use when building buildings or bu laying out basically anything. Uh, all the time. So that is extremely important. That is the first and probably most important thing we can do with this piece of string. So what else can we do with our bit of string? Well, we can attach a weight to it. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be stone, wood, a piece of horse dung that's dried. It does not matter. It just has to be a, piece, it just has to be a weight. Now what this allows us to do is create a plumb bob, which is a measurement tool or layout tool that's been around since the age of Egyptians. They've been made out of steel, wood, brass. It doesn't matter. It can be any weight. And what this does is points down to the gravitational center of the Earth, which means we get a straight vertical line. What that allows us to do is make sure that our poles or our uh, posts are straight. So when we're building our building or stone wall or fortification or whatever, we can ensure that everything is straight up and down. So while we're hewing our logs or whatever, we can make sure that they, the sides are vertically straight. We can't yet measure them. We can't yet make sure they're square to each side is square to the other. But we can at least make sure all our posts are straight up and down. So our building's starting to come together. But we don't have any way to measure anything yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. So our peasant or fur trapper uh, now has the ability to make straight lines and straight vertical lines, but he has no way to measure those lines. So what we really need is a unit of measurement. Now unit of measurements can be anything. You don't have to use inches or centimeters. It just has to be a repeatable unit of measurement. It's useful to be able to transfer plans from one person to the next to have one that everyone understands, but it's not necessary. Now, the measurement I'm going to use is the point from here on my knife to here. And we're just going to transfer that onto a piece of wood. Now, the good thing about this is if at any point I need to make another ruler, I can simply take out my knife and make another ruler because I have an object that's dimensions don't normally change. So right there, I have our unit of measurement. We'll call that a bob. And we're going to put 12 bobs in a row. We're going to call that a gym, and then we're going to put three gyms in a row and call that a gym bob, which will be the name of our hypothetical pre peasant or fur trapper. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've invented a completely new unit of measurement. Uh, we've made ourselves a ruler here with 12 bobs in a row, which we'll call a gym, and we've invented the ability to make straight lines, which we've had to use in order to make an accurate ruler, and we've invented a tool to make straight vertical lines. Really, we haven't invented it, but we've made them. So, what do we need next? We still need the ability to level horizontal object, objects, our beams or blocks or whatever we're baking our buildings out of. And we need to be able to make right angles. We have no way to do that right now. We cannot make a square. Now we can make straight vertical lines. We can make straight horizontal lines. But we have no way of measuring that angle to make a perfect 90 degree angle, which is extremely important if you want to make square buildings or square beams or anything really. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need our third concept, which is three numbers, three, four, and five. And now we have the ability to measure those out. So we're going to need our bit of string again. So how are we going to find those right angles? Well, I've taken our bit of string and I've marked off 12 bobs on it so that we've got them all in a line there, as you can see. Now what you're going to want to do is tie it off at the first and last mark. So there you go, you have a loop that is exactly 12 units of measurement long, or round, I should say. So how do we do this? Turn this into a right angle, because it's just a floppy loop right now. Well, take it like this, go exactly three out on one side, and go exactly four out on another, and look at that, you've got a right angle.
So what can we do with this new knowledge that three, four, and five make a right angle triangle without making any more tools? Uh, what can we do with it? Well, we can lay out a building. We can lay out any building you want from your house to a log cabin to the Great Pyramids of Giza. All you need is your bit of string or rope in this case and knowledge at three, four, and five make an isosceles triangle. I'm going to show you how to do this. This is something you can do in real life if you want to build a shed or something. And we're going to pretend this is a field. This is where you're going to be building your cathedral or fortification or whatever. So what you're going to want to do is put a post in the ground. Take your rope, stretch it out to four, and put a stake right there. So now you've got that second stake in the ground. Simply measure out three. You've got a right angle triangle there. And put another stake in the ground right there. So we've got our three, four, five triangle here forming a right angle. So next you're going to want to make a rope that's marked with whatever unit of measurement you're using. In this case, Jim Bob's, because we're pretending this is a big field. And we're going to make our building seven by 10. So you're going to go ahead and measure that out, keeping this rope in line with these two, and put a stake at whatever measurement you want that first wall to be. All right, now do the same with whatever length you want your second wall to be. Now, those first two stakes can be removed, and you've got two walls they will be perfectly square to each other. Now, for the next wall, you're going to basically repeat the process of the first wall we made. So go ahead and measure out three, four, five triangle there, keeping in line with this. So the best method for doing that is to stretch out a string between those two posts so that you've got yourself a straight line and then measure out your triangle from that. All right, now we've got this square. Simply stretch out your line for your second measurement here and make it the same as the first wall there and put a stake in the ground, lining it, keeping it in line with these two posts. So now you've got your four posts for whatever you're building, your log cabin, whatever, sphinx. And if you did this correctly, this angle here should be 90 degrees to both of these points. Remember, we did not measure this 90 degree angle, but since we laid out the other two angles correctly, should be 90 degrees. That's how you lay out a building with nothing but a bit of string and the knowledge three, four, and five. So now we know how to lay out a building so all the corners are square, but that rope method really is not good for squaring up, say, a beam or post or really anything, a block of uh, stone. So we need a tool that will do that for us. So what we've got here is a two chunks of wood. We've used our bit of string to make a straight edge here and a straight edge here. And what we want these to be is uh, a ratio of three and four. And then we need a string as a ratio comparatively to the other ones of five. So all we do is take this, put the string on this corner, put the other end of the string on that corner, and we have our square, 90 degrees. We can measure anything we want with this now. So now we're just going to pin this in place. So now we have our square. We have the ability to make sure things are at a 90 degree angle, make sure they're square. We have the ability to make straight lines with our uh, bit of string. We are able to make things sure things are vertically straight with this, but we don't really have any way to make sure that things are horizontally level. So everything may have 90 degree angles, but your building or house is still going to look like a leaning tower of Pisa because you have no way to make sure anything is level, except we do with these two objects. So what do we get when we combine our plumb bob and our square? Well, we get this. What this is called is a plumb level. It's simply our square from before, but we've marked off uh, three on this side, ratio three with the other uh, leg that is also ratio three, and we put our straight edge right across, and we put a line right in the middle. And what that allows us to do is find out if horizontal beams or stones or whatever are level. As you can see, as I change the level, it moves. And this is something that can be found all throughout history. You see examples of this in Egypt all the way through the Middle Ages to modern day. Now, modern days, we usually use 
a bubble level, but it's the same concept. You can do exactly the same thing with it. Now another thing you can do with this is flip it to the side like this, and if you put a line in the center here, you can easily tell if your uh, posts or whatever you want to see that's uh, vertical, you can tell whether or not that is level as well. Now you probably want a weight that's a little heavier than a key, something like lead or something like that, maybe a nice steel ball or whatever, but you can do that. You can tell horizontal and vertical very easily. So what do we have left? The only thing we have left really is we do have no accurate way to accurately measure something. We can do whole units of measure, whole units of bob as we, so we've come up with, but we uh, have no way to accurately measure something. We have no way to make fractions of bob or whatever your unit is called. And the reason we don't have that is because we need a square to determine that. And I'll show you how to do that now. All right, now that we've figured out how to make an object square or lay out a square, we're going to take our ruler and make this far more accurate. We're going to take our original unit of measurement here, which we got our bob from. I'm going to mark one on this side of the ruler. So I got one there. I'm going to go flip it around, and do it right on the other side. Just like that. And I'm going to make a line connecting the two. All right, now we've got this line. Now this is the reason you needed the square. You need to take each one of these points and draw a perfectly squared line down to this line so that you're creating boxes here. So let's do that. All right, what that leaves you with is one square bob or one square unit of measurement, whatever you've named your unit of measurement, doesn't matter. So what you do next is connect the corners inside that box. Very easy, I'm sure you can accomplish that. Actually a little difficult with a camera in your way, but now we make an X. Now take your square, and draw a line from the center of that X up to the top. What you've got now is exactly one half bob. Actually, it's a little bit off, but you can see where I was going for there. That is one half. So now that I've got one half bob, I'll just repeat the process with each one of these rectangles. So long as whatever you're drawing this in has 90 degrees on all of its corners, this will work. Now we've got one quarter bob, one half bob, and one full bob. So now when we're making our beams or uh, pillars or blocks of stone or whatever, we can precisely measure them. So that's pretty much everything you need. So with one bit of string, we've been able to make tools or figure out how to square things, make straight lines, and make everything level, both vertical and horizontal. You've made tools that allow you to build basically anything, from the pyramids to a farmhouse. And this is why I think you don't often see reenactors or in historical accounts of people just carrying around levels or rulers or whatnot, because you really didn't need them. You could make up your own unit of measurement, It'd be your thumb, your foot, um, length of your arm was often used. It didn't matter. It only mattered if you needed to transfer those plans to someone else. So if it was a huge job site, you would often have one unit of measure for that whole job site. But it's not unreasonable for buckskinners or any sort of reenactor to not be carrying around these tools even though all of, in all of these eras of history, people were building things. They often had rudimentary tools. The Vikings didn't bring these things with them. They brought rudimentary tools and they were still able to build buildings, you know, make beams for their buildings, make uh, masts for their ships and ensure the masts were uh, vertical uh, and not uh, off to one side or whatever. And they were able to do this with very simple tools because they didn't really have to take them with them. Just with a piece of string, and a couple bits of knowledge, you can make any tool you needed. So that's basically the point of this video, and I hope you possibly learned something from this. If you do reenactment, uh, you can make your own tools with a bit of string.